I hold for Phyllis back on YouTube to tell you about this. The new Farming Profi CH27 wood chipping machine, okay? Let's go. The Farming Profi CH27 is one of the most technological and advanced wood chipper machines on the market. They have implemented very clever technical solutions to improve uh, fuel consumption, quality of the wood chip and also safety and usability obviously. Since I do have a lot of details about this machine, I'm gonna split the video in two parts. This one is about the tractor side of the machine and then the other will be about the feeding side. This machine produces wood chip. First of all, we need it for our heating system that is a rolling wood chip boiler based. And second, but not for importance, wood chip is the starting point for the pellet production, that is my dad's activity. The three-point hitch is the classical mounting structure for this kind of machines. You need actually a quite big tractor in order to lift it up because you clearly see that the weight distribution changes. In fact, it actually, this machine weights 1,400 kilograms, so it is quite a lot. The Fiat Agri 115, 90 horsepower has a quite strong chassis, so it is able to lift it up, but mm, it is a lot. Talking about tractors, the power demand is in the range 40 kilowatts up to 115 kilowatts. Uh, it really depends on material hardness and also feeding speed. We are running the engine up to 2400 RPM that in the 1000 PT RPM PTO configuration is resulting in having here 960 RPM in the rotor. The PTO drive shaft that transfers the power from the engine to the rotor has the overrunning clutch feature. What does it mean? It means that it can be driven in one direction, but it can spin freely in the other. This allows the chipper rotor to continue rotating even if its speed is higher than the one specified by the engine. This happens if the engine tractor immediately stops, maybe because of a problem, or eventually in the turning off phase when you are gently slowing down the speed of the engine. This feature is really important because of the inertia, you don't want to have all the kinetic energy that is going to load the mechanics, okay? You just want to have this decoupling. Uh, it is for mechanical safety, let's say. Another important safety feature is the slip clutch, okay? Usually you do have that the engine shaft and also the rotor are um, directly coupled and the torque is transmitted via this clutch, obviously. Once the torque generated is too high, then this clutch starts slipping. This happens when the rotor is blocked. Maybe you do have a rock, maybe you do have a piece of iron or a very big trunk. It immediately stops, but you cannot immediately stop also the engine. So in order to avoid mechanical loading for all the transmission, we are going to decouple the motion between the rotor and the engine via this clutch. It is another safety aspect. The next group I'm going to analyze is the independent hydraulic unit that you can find in the bottom here. The first main element is the oil tank, that uh, together with the pump they are going to guarantee the correct oil, oil flow and also oil pressure to all the hydraulic services in the machine, uh, like the valve group, the, the motors and also the feeding rollers. Finally, you do have also the oil cooler that is actually recommended for very high temperature environments. It is directly connected to the battery with a fuse production on it. Let's then pass to the key point of the video, that is the frame. We have this division, the lower frame, the upper frame, the rotor inside and also the discharge pipe. The base frame is the lower part that supports the wall machine. You do have on it also uh, big bearing supports on which the disc is mounted. The top frame is pinned here on one side, you can open it on the other side and you can simply rotate it to have access to the rotor on inside. The rotor is composed of uh, two thick uh, steel discs and on one of them you do have the couple of knives. At that point we can talk about the wood chip production, how it is produced in this kind of machines. First of all, you're going to feed the material into the feeding entrance, okay? Your roller are grabbing the material and they're pushing it against the rotor. Knives, the rotor is fastly rotating at high speed. As I told you, we are at about 900 RPMs. At that point, knives are cutting tiny slices of, uh, of wood and these slices are going inside the rotor, okay? 
Since the rotor rotates actually at high speeds, they are completely smashed several times in smaller and smaller pieces. And once these pieces are small enough, they are able to pass through a grate, let's say, that is located here. It is called the twig breaker, obviously. And once you have reached the desired dimensions for the wood chip, actually the final product is able to go away via the discharge pipe outside the machine, wherever you want. These are all the details about the wood chip production. Okay, let's then talk about the knives. There are those components doing the most important part of the work. Knives are mounted on the internal side of the, the rotor, 180 degrees, one with respect to the other, because they have to keep the rotor balanced. Okay, they are very big. They are made of hardened steel because of the very demanding working conditions down there, and they do have also a very interesting blade geometry. There are two transition angles. The first edge is 45 degrees inclined with respect to the knife plane, and the second one is 30 degrees inclined. This kind of uh, specific shape is really effective in optimizing the cutting conditions. So it is giving you maximum efficiency in producing wood chip. Knives are mounted via four bolts onto the knife holder that is located inside the rotor disc. This component is really important, first of all, because it gives support to the knife. And second, because it is used to adjust the chip size. How can you do that? Well, you are using the knife holder to move the cutting edge of the knife farther or closer with respect to the knife, to the rotor plate. And by doing that, you do have range, five millimeters up to 25 millimeters. And by doing that, you are adjusting the size of the wood slices that is cut every turn. Every time that you are adjusting the knife's position, you do have also to adjust the anvil's position, the counter cutting elements that are located into the feeding entrance down there. Let's then describe the final component of the machine, that is the discharge pipe. As I told you during the wood chipping production description, once the wood chip that is rotating here is small enough, like the final product, it is able to pass through these components. There are There is a grate here that is called twig breaker. It is able to pass and then it goes away on the outside via this pipe. It is really high, it weights a lot. In fact, you do have a small winch here in order to lift it up. And uh, it is completely adjustable. First of all, you lose the lever, then you manually rotate the wall structure via a long bar and you direct the end tip where you, where you want to point the wood chip, okay? It is very long because you are able to load the trucks or eventually big bags as we do, or you can discharge it wherever you want. This ends the description of the Traxor side of the chip. I covered all the details about this part and in the next video I'm going to show you the feeding side. I hope that the video was interesting for you and also helpful, so thanks for watching and subscribe. Bye!